Her. Tanya, where'd you go? That's all for this edition of Dateline. We'll see you again next Friday at 9, 8 central. And of course, I'll see you each weeknight for NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt for all of us at NBC News. Good night. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. This is 5 on your side at 10. Tonight, gunfire outside of a popular Metro East nightclub. One man seriously injured and now police searching for a gunman. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. That shooting happening overnight in the parking lot of Roxy's in Brooklyn. New at 10, neighbors are fed up with the violence and they're sending a message to club goers. Here's Robert Townsend. For the past 25 years, Angela Bell has enjoyed living in the village of Brooklyn, Illinois. I feel safe. I feel comfortable. Bell's home is down the street from exotic nightclubs and adult businesses. The retiree and great grandma has gotten used to the loud music from the clubs. Otherwise, she says her close knit neighborhood is usually quiet. On this street, there's only like four people that live here and uh, Everybody is, is, is here for each other. But Illinois State Police say shortly after 3 Friday morning, gunfire disturbed the peace. They say a 24-year-old man got into a fight with a group of people in the parking lot at Roxy's before he was shot. Angela Bell heard all the gunfire. It was looked like Pow, 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 pow. And it wasn't the first time. She says several years ago, a shooting happened outside a former nightclub near her home. Two stray bullets hit her house. It's annoying. About 700 people live in the community that's three miles northeast of downtown St. Louis. It's not the, the villagers. It's the outsiders that come in, that comes into the village that causes the problems. They are the ones that give our village a bad name. Right now, Illinois State Police tell us no one has been arrested in connection with the shooting. They say the investigation is ongoing. Meantime, on this, her 73rd birthday, Angela Bell has one wish for the people coming to these nightclubs this weekend. That's what I wish. If they're going to do anything, leave it inside the club. Leave the guns at home. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Tonight, federal officials are sounding the alarm over carjackers who are targeting rideshare drivers. It's happening in East St. Louis. The FBI reports seven carjackings in the last three months, and they all involve rideshare drivers. One of those cases turned deadly when a 49-year-old nurse named Harriet Childers was shot to death in August. She drove for Uber. Tonight, a former rideshare driver who left the job tells five on your side she worries about her friends who stayed. I can't even cross into St. Louis without having PTSD because of downtown. And I don't know how all my people are still doing it because I'm watching them on our group. And they're going through hell for a dollar. Officers are now asking drivers to verify and screen riders and to not accept any third party requests. The former driver you just heard from believes nothing will change unless those rideshare companies raise their standards and better prioritize driver safety. This weekend, city leaders and advocates looking for ways to make St. Louis safer. The Elevate Conference is taking place at Harris State University. Today focused on finding solutions to end violence. The event continues tomorrow with a family fun day from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. It is free and open to the public. New tonight, the hundreds of millions of dollars received in the Ram settlement has been moved to a new account. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones and County Executive Sam Page says the $513 million is now in a flexible, low-risk account at Commerce Bank. That's in line with other City of St. Louis funds. Last month, the Regional Sports Authority voted unanimously to request a plan on how to move that money into an account that could yield a better return. Negotiations continue on how to best divide those funds to benefit our area in the long term.
Turning now to your weather, a seasonable October night across our area. Chief Meteorologist Scott Cotto now to explain what we can expect for the weekend. Scott. Well, a lot less wind on the way for tomorrow. That's one thing, and that's a good thing because winds gusted today to around 40 miles per hour in some cases. Right now, we still have a few clouds around. We watched as they rolled in. We're down to 60 degrees at Lambert right now. The front is off to our south and east. You may have seen a sprinkle north of St. Louis, but for the most part, we really didn't get an opportunity to get that rain in here. There are a few showers showing up on the radar, but the air is just so dry. So as you look out and over towards the Enterprise Center where the who is performing tonight and where the blues will take the home ice tomorrow in the season opener. We tell you that frost is possible north of St. Louis overnight tonight. There's actually a frost advisory up in Pike County and going up towards Hannibal. But otherwise, the weekend is looking pretty doggone good. We have a decent amount of sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. We have temperatures that are fairly seasonable, but there is a big change early next week, and that includes the potential for a hard freeze. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes, Brent. All right, Scott, we'll see you then. Well, high levels of radioactive contamination found at Jenna Elementary School near the infamous Coldwater Creek. Test results found high levels of lead and PB210 inside of the school and on parts of the playground. The Hazelwood School District says the Board of Education will now consult with attorneys and even experts to determine what to do next. We are absolutely 100% committed that the school district needs to advocate for and see this cleaned up immediately. There is a PTA board meeting Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Parents can show up to express their concerns and take part in conversations for safe cleanup. All right, take a look at this piece of metal that crashed through the windshield of a driver on I-64. It killed that driver. Police say the woman was heading westbound around 1230 Tuesday when she crashed into a concrete wall near South Vandeventer. Police aren't sure where that metal came from because no one saw it happen. Witnesses only saw the driver hitting that concrete barrier. Well, tonight, a Metro East scrapyard is closed for business days after being targeted in a sting. Back in September, Wood River police were tipped off about sketchy activity at Summit Processors. A sting of the since shuttered business uncovered nearly 300 converters that are waiting to be scrapped. Though it's still not clear how many, if any of those converters might be stolen, police say it's not likely they'll ever find their way back to their original owner. Unless they had a specific identification on that converter, you know, their some sort of marking or their driver's license number or something like that engraved on there, it's going to be difficult to determine whether it was the one that specifically came off their vehicle. The employee who bought three converters from undercover officers is now facing misdemeanor charges. Under Illinois law, felony charges are only possible after a second offense. Well, two former Washington University pediatricians are being honored for their work in St. Louis. Children's Place between Euclid and Taylor is now being named Nash Way. And that's to celebrate Dr. Helen Nash and her brother, Dr. Homer Nash Jr. Both spent decades providing health care to generations of children, many of whom were economically disadvantaged. Well, a sad day as St. Louis remembers a baseball legend. Former St. Louis Cardinal and Baseball Hall of Famer Bruce Souter has died. Considered one of baseball's dominant relievers, Souter pitched for the Redbirds from 1981 to 1984, and he was on the 1982 World Series championship team. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2006 and was a fan favorite in our city. Bruce Souter was 69 years old. Well, hockey season officially getting underway tomorrow in St. Louis. You have a live look now at Enterprise Center tonight, where in less than 24 hours, the Blues will host their season opener against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Puck drops at 7 o'clock. There is a rally at Union Station before the game, and you're invited. It's free and open to the public. There will be live music, games, a t-shirt toss, and Louis the mascot will make an appearance. That rally runs from 3 until 5 tomorrow afternoon. Still ahead at 10, the return of a spooktacular tradition. Zoo at the Boo, ah, Boo at the Zoo. How about that? It's back. We'll take you there right after the break. Yo! 
Yar! Welcome to the St. Louis Zoo! Things are looking pretty spooky at the St. Louis Zoo. It's the annual Boo at the Zoo event, and it kicked off tonight. The event allows you to experience the zoo at nighttime, which is also decked out in Halloween decor. We met a pair of friends who talked about why they make it a point to be here. It's really spooky. It's just the perfect thing to do when it's like cl getting closer to Halloween and it's like October and stuff. It's just the most amazing thing to do. And you can also like wear spooky stuff and just come here and have fun. All right, I think they can be spokesmen for the event. Boo at the Zoo runs every night from 5 to 8.30 p.m. until October 30th. Scott Connell joining us now. He's hard at work in the Weather Center, but I did hear you laughing at those two young ladies. Aren't yeah, they adorable? You know, she's right. <laughs> she's absolutely right. It is a perfect thing to do, yeah, and you know, we've yeah. got you've got Boo at the Zoo right now. We've got the all the Christmas lights oh, that'll yeah. come our way here as we head into November and December, and you've also got a look at the beautiful fall foliage around the area. You know, we're not at peak yet. But the colors are coming on faster than they usually do. Sharon was out in Columbia, Missouri, out near Stevens Lake when she shot this picture, but she shared it with us on the Five on Your Side Facebook Facebook group, which is really good. We love our weather watchers. Temperatures, they were in the low 70s today, but your wind gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour. Again, fortunately, those winds have settled down tonight at least a lot more so than they were, but they are turning more to the northwest as the front is pressing south and east of St. Louis already down to 47 at Pittsfield. Our temperatures are going to cool off pretty quickly overnight. We will drop back into the 40s, lower 40s in town, but some 30s in the outlying areas, especially north of St. Louis. 60 right now at Lambert, 73 was our high, 43 was a low this morning. We'll be in the same territory, but the wind right now is only out of the north northwest at seven miles per hour. A lot better than those gusty winds this afternoon. Troy, Jerseyville, Bowling Green, Litchfield may have some patchy frost to the north. In fact, there is a frost advisory in effect here as you go up from Pike County back to Audrain County and then heading on into northern portions of Missouri. That's where the winds will die down as the skies clear out that front pressing through the region. The air tomorrow that we deal with isn't that much cooler than today. We'll start chilly in the morning, but with lots of sunshine, we're back into the mid 50s by 11 o'clock. Not nearly the wind across the area tomorrow. We'll climb into the mid 60s tomorrow afternoon as some clouds roll in from the west. We have highs in the mid 60s, so about five to eight degrees cooler than what we saw today. Any rain for tomorrow and into Sunday is staying to our south ahead of yet another cold front that comes swinging through the area. This one has something behind it that we haven't seen so far this fall, and that is some really chilly air. So while Sunday's pretty good, by the time we get to Monday, we're looking at colder breezes blowing in across the bi-state region. And by Tuesday morning, a lot of spots down into the 20s away from town. That'll continue into Wednesday morning when we also will likely see a widespread frost across the area. So for most of us, this will be our season ending, uh, growing season ending situation as temperatures drop below freezing. Only near 50 for the high come Tuesday afternoon, Brett. Yeah, before the weekend, not bad at all. Right, yeah, the weekend looks pretty good. Scott, thanks. That's it for your news at 10, but Frank Cusimano now with five on your side.